today, left-hander Trevor DeLate. Six-foot grad transfer from the University of Maine. And looking forward to seeing Trevor DeLate pitch. First time we've seen him here in 2021. First time he's made a start in a Flames uniform here in Lynchburg. Yeah. And yeah, he is uh, just what this Flames team has needed. Stepped right into that Friday starters role. And it's been everything and more that Liberty hoped he'd be. Center fielder Dominic McIntyre leads off for North Alabama as we take a look at the North Alabama lineup. Dominic McIntyre, true freshman, leads off. Then Thrasher, Daniel Kane, Ben Kiefer, the catcher, will bat fifth. Then Homan, Hudson, Kevin Brennan, and Levi Jansen will round out the lineup. Next pitch down low to McIntyre. And the count goes to two and one. McIntyre, freshman from Lawrenceville, Georgia. Two strikes now on the center fielder. Really good speed at the leadoff spot. And North Alabama needs him to get on base to have some success. And he leads off with a walk here to begin our game. Yeah, that's been rare for Trevor DeLate. He has been really good filling up the strike zone. Uh, so a rare free pass there. Not the guy you want to hand one out to. As you mentioned, really good on the base pads is Dominic McIntyre. And with North Alabama struggles offensively, if they can get a guy on, they're going to try to make something happen. Watch for them to try to get out and run early in this ballgame. Austin Thrasher's the second baseman. Sophomore from uh, Dothan, Alabama, transferred in from Enterprise State Community College. Did have a hit back on Tuesday. He's reached base his last eight games. And leads North Alabama with a 318 batting average. Fourth meeting between these two. Both of them came into the A-Sun two seasons ago. Liberty as an established Division I program. North Alabama is in the third year of a four-year transition from Division II. They were 3-13 and 13 last season and 16-38 and 38 back in 2019. Just the second losing season in 36 years. So a team that is used to winning and we'll get more into that transition as we move on able to catch up with Mike Keene their head coach earlier this week gave us some good insight to that transition Thrasher takes a strike at the belt Delates coming in off a win last week down at UCF Liberty sweeping the series from the Knights. They've won five in a row coming into today. 1-1. One, one. Off speed. Count goes to 1-2. and two. Delayed 85 pitches in his last start. Five innings, one earned run, struck out six. Gave up just two hits in those five innings. A lot of fastballs, change-ups from Trevor Delayed. a guy that just always seems to be in control out there a veteran grad transfer as you mentioned doesn't get rattled and that's what the flames love just the poise he brings on the mound hit and run ground ball to the left side cam locklear will toss over wide throw and logan matthew able to keep his foot on the bag as we take a look at the flames defense from left to right aaron anderson jalen guy veteran center fielder and jake wilson in right McDyer and Locklear, two super seniors back for fifth year on the left side. Wagner and Matthew on the right. And Gray Betts, the catcher today for Trevor DeLate. And Brady Gulikowski, the DH, he also catches as well. But he's been banged up a little bit coming off a knee injury in the offseason. And trying to get his bat to come around here in 2021. One away for Devin Daniel, the left fielder. Our impact player we touched on at the outset of the broadcast. McIntyre moved up to second on the throw over from Cam Locklear. 
Well, I can't tell you how important it would be for this North Alabama offense to get a run on the board early. There's a drive into center field. Dalen Guy under it, makes the play. Tag throw to third, not in time, as McIntyre aggressive on the base pass. Gets to third with two-way. Oh, I think they just appealed the wow. second base. Yep. Left a little early. So McIntyre is out on the appeal. And nothing doing for North Alabama in the top of the first. Top half of the second from Lynchburg, Virginia, as we take a look at the weather today. Great conditions for a baseball game as North Alabama and Liberty open up conference play in a three-game set. Alongside Matt Warner, I'm Alan York. Flame stranding runners at second, third in the bottom half of the first. As Logan Matthews struck out to end the frame. And Trevor DeLate goes back to work. Ground ball to Trey McDyer, one to Hopper, as he throws out Harris Kane for round number one. Here are the umpires for today's game. Jason Johnson calling the balls and strikes. Tyler Simpson is out at first today. And Clint Lawson out at third. Saw a couple of those guys coming into the ballpark about 1 o'clock today, getting ready for the game. Yeah, let's go back to that play, though, by Trey McDyer. That was a great snag there at third base. If that gets by him, there's no way Locklear is able to make the throw across in time. So that, that took away a base knock. And for a team offensively that's really struggled in North Alabama, man, you're just begging for some breaks to go your way offensively. Ground ball hits sharply to second. Will Wagner tosses out Ben Kiefer two-way. Trevor DeLate making quick work of North Alabama here in the second as Reed Homan up to the plate, Junior from Athens, Alabama. Enters with a three-game hitting streak. Yeah, and it seems like DeLate is kind of got his control back. You know, a lot of times they say, oh, you want to try to jump on a good pitcher in the first inning when they're kind of figuring things out. North Alabama unable to do that, and now he seems to be dialing it in. Fly out to left, Aaron Anderson. Makes a grab, and that's a quick one, two, three inning for Trevor DeLake and the Flames. Bottom of the second coming up. No score, top of the third. Liberty, North Alabama open up a three-game set in Lynchburg, Virginia with Matt Warner, Alan York. There's the skipper of the Flames, Scott Jackson. In his fifth season, as the Flames playing some good baseball coming into this weekend. Spent a good deal of time down in Chapel Hill with the Tar Heels. Liberty beating North Carolina back on Tuesday, 8 to 7. And Mike Keen. He has been at North Alabama three plus decades. Most of it as an assistant coach and now in his 13th season as the head man. 1985 graduate of Nebraska Kearney. Ground ball left side into the hole and through Hudson. With a leadoff single. Give the Lions their second base runner of the ballgame. Yeah, get their leadoff man on again. They did so in the first. Not able to get them around. We'll see what type of approach they take here with the bottom part of the lineup coming due. So those scoring at home before we took our last break, Jalen Guy was hit by a pitch. He was deemed out at the plate for not getting out of the way. They reviewed it, and it was confirmed. And so that'll be a strikeout for Guy, the fourth for Hunter Davidson. Kevin Brenning, right fielder for North Alabama. Four for 30 on the season. He is a career 296 hitter. His best season came in his freshman year, three years ago, he hit 330. And he's out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Moeller High School, and he took a circuitous route to get to Florence, Alabama. He spent a semester at the University of Arizona and then left there and spent a semester at IMG Academy to train and then got on North Alabama's radar 
and says he's really enjoyed the small town feel of where that campus is. And he's in grad school right now for sports management. But down to late, pivots off the mound, and the sacrifice will move Hudson up to second with one away. Well, you mentioned him being from Muller High School, and you know who his high school teammate was. Keegan McDowell. Keegan McDowell, <laughs> that's right. A Liberty basketball player. Uh, Brennan played a little basketball himself there at Muller, so. Every time I see Moeller, Keegan McDowell obviously is one that comes to mind. Ken Griffey Jr. went to Moeller High School. He turned out pretty well. He sure did. Ground ball to McDyer. Now a pickle situation, and they're going to get Hudson off the bag at second. Nice play there by Trey McDyer to start that. And not sure where Hudson was going on that. No, no. I mean, you got to see it through. But twice already we have seen defensive plays by Trey McDyer that show you exactly why he's out there. Even though he's struggling swinging the bat, we saw a great play to his left to take away a base hit last inning. And now just being aware there at third base and taking the out that they present to you, you cut down the lead runner. 5-4 on the put out. Two-way now for Dominic McIntyre, who walked his first time up. But those are the kind of things when you're struggling offensively, you can't leave early to try to advance it as we saw McIntyre do on a oh, fly ball yeah. in center field in the first and you can't run into outs like you're struggling as it is to create some runs create some offense now you're just giving away outs with dumb decisions on the base pass hey, hey, yeah I mean the ball was right in front of Hudson and it wasn't a judgment of all oh, let me McDyer straining to get it was hit right to him off speed to McIntyre and Trevor Delay working himself into a groove here. Yeah, this is a North Alabama team hitting 173 on the year. So you just want to fill up that strike zone and prove that they can break out of that slump that they're in. Stats are not counting for North Alabama nationally as they make their transition from D2. If they did count, they'd be hitting 253 out of 261 teams. Pop out to first. And hey, Logan Matthew puts out Dominic McIntyre. Still no score. Middle of three coming up. And opening up a sun play. And as we head to the fourth, we'll pass things off to Matt Warren. Appreciate it, AY. Trevor Delate back out there for Liberty. Facing the two-hole hitter, Austin Thrasher, to begin things here in the fourth inning. Delate, one pitch. It's Thrasher to roll the shortstop, throw across in time. One pitch, one out here in the fourth. Well, Trevor Delay, a really interesting story. You mentioned a grad transfer from Maine. He actually pitched against Liberty right here in Lynchburg back in 2019. And after last season, Decided he wanted to transfer, put himself into the transfer portal, but said, you know, instead of like calling programs and trying to get people interested, he said he just felt like he was just going to sit back and let people reach out to him. He wanted to go to a place where he felt wanted. He didn't want to have to feel like he was talking himself huh. onto a roster. As that one shot foul off the bat of Daniel. And he was actually getting ready one day to commit to another A Sun program when he got a call from Liberty. And he had been interested in Liberty. He loved what he saw when he came here, loved the facilities. Actually, say loved just seeing how much fun it seemed like the <laughs> Flames were having, and they were well coached. Yeah. And he got the call from uh, pitching coach Matt Williams as that one skied out to right field, two away. An interesting story from the Liberty side as well is in the transfer portal, they didn't have him listed correctly. He was, if you're a grad transfer, it's supposed to have a little graduation cap next to your name, apparently. They didn't have that. So Matt Williams, the pitching coach, wasn't reaching out to him because they weren't interested in the guy that had to sit for a year. But finally, right, you know, right. in the middle of the summer, he's like, you know what? I just well, let me just see what his story is. And so he called that day. They said Trevor just started laughing on the phone. He's like, man, this is this is bigger than just, you know, me. This yes, is a God thing. Absolutely. And it all worked out for him to come to Liberty. He's married now. He, he got married as well to his wife, Morgan. She wanted him to come to Liberty. She wanted them to come. They have some actual friends here from Maine that go to Liberty. And so she kind of wanted him to come here anyway. 
And it all ended up working out. He's in a Flames uniform. He's the Friday night starter, and he has been everything and more in this starting rotation for Liberty as you take a look at the numbers he's put up this year. You know, we talk about a Canadian pipeline, Bellevue Community College in Washington right. at one yeah. point for Liberty Baseball. Maine seems to be a pipeline as well. Josh Mack, Chris Ferguson from the football team. That's true. Transferred in and yeah. How about that? Folks up there with the Black Bears are like, yeah, we're not a huge fan of this pipeline. You keep just all, all the talent just keeps heading down to Lynchburg. Stop poaching everybody. Yeah, that's right. But it's worked out well for Liberty. Pitch on the way. That one shot foul off the bat of Harris Kane. Kane grounded out to third back in the second inning. Yeah, I loved Scott Jackson when he described what it's like having Trevor delayed on the mound. He said, it's like eating an apple with your feet crossed on the couch, just chilling out. Yep. You just totally relaxed. You know exactly what you're getting. And what they're getting is a great start here this afternoon. One, two, three, down go the Lions in the top half of the fourth. Still no score in Lynchburg as we head to the bottom half. It's only the third home game of the season, by the way. They have been on the road a lot thus far. As Delate has that one deflect off his glove. Coming in, McDyer on the move makes the play. Trey McDyer, another solid defensive play as Delate retires Ben Kiefer to lead things off here in the fifth. 1 5 3 officially if you're scoring at home. And who is it? That's right. Always oh, backing up your teammate. So Liberty is, I was telling you, 10 of their first 12 on the road. Scott Jackson, when we talked to him this week, was downright giddy to be playing in Lynchburg. But you know what? Seven and five through your first 12 when you're on the road that much, and also considering who the Flames have played here early on, I think uh, Coach Jackson has to be pretty thrilled with what his team has given him thus far. Yeah. Playing a Campbell team preseason to win the Big South at TCU the following weekend. And then at UCF last weekend, a team that had just beaten top ranked Ole Miss at the time, two out of three. At North Carolina. A couple of hops, long throw across, and wasn't dug out by Matthew. You know, I think Locklear had time to get a little bit more on that throw. He kind of threw it off his back foot. And made it difficult on his first baseman, Logan Matthew. Yep. That's a tough in-between hop, and Logan, I don't even think he got glove on it. So Holman reaches on the E6. See if North Alabama can take advantage. They have not had much happen here today against Trevor DeLayton. That pitch count, that is at least close to accurate. He is in the 30s as far as pitches thrown. Here we are in the fifth inning. So he has been ultra efficient. That one skied out to right field. Wilson roams under it, and there's two away. Yeah, looking at delay, Matt, reading a story up on him. His first two years at Maine, they weren't easy. ERAs 5.96 and 8.61 as a sophomore. Struggled with his control. And then 2019 had a breakout season as he was transformed into a closer. Yeah. And then last year, back into the rotation. Boy, he might throw a complete game at about 60 pitches today <laughs> if it keeps heading this direction. So a base runner reaches on an error, but that's all UNA gets here in the top half of the fifth. And Liberty's last win on Tuesday. That came over North Carolina down in Chapel Hill. Flames able to, he built a, a good lead, thanks in part to a Logan Matthew home run, and then kind of held on for dear life down the stretch of that ball game. Able to win 8-7. As you saw there, Liberty did leave 10 men on base in that game. They've left seven so far in the first five innings of play here out there on the base pads. 
So we remain scoreless as Trevor DeLate goes back to work. Tar Heels will be here on Tuesday. That's right. Ground ball out to short. Another opportunity for Cam Locklear. Throwing error earlier. Not so here. That was a strike across the diamond and quickly went away. That is the fun part about college baseball, and at least for the Flames. They get a lot of good ACC matchups in their home ballpark. We have a facility like this. You have those programs in the region that want to come play in a midweek game. And so you talk about some of those. You got North Carolina coming in. You got Wake Forest. Duke comes to town. Virginia. So, yeah, a lot of great matchups for Liberty, for with programs that people you know want to come out and yeah. see, you know. Let's look at some of the upcoming games. BCU, they go on the road, home, back on the road. Kind of like a subway series, but yep. it'll probably be in a bus. <laughs> I would imagine. The Clemson, South Carolina series is always a neat one to follow because they'll play in Columbia, they'll play in Clemson. They also play in Greenville, which is right between those two cities at the Greenville Drive Minor League Ballpark. And speaking of the Gamecocks, Wes Clark, catcher for the Gamecocks, his sister Maddie Clark played softball at Liberty. Their dad, David, played baseball at Liberty. Two-time National Player of the Week so far this season. Gamecocks playing at Texas this weekend for a weekend series. So some connections there. Austin Thrasher at the dish after that walk to McIntyre. I don't know if the late knows Dominic McIntyre just trying to take care of him or what, but he's walked him twice here today. And you're talking about on the season. Trevor Delay had only walked four guys in three starts. So as we told you back in the first inning, McIntyre not exactly the guy you want to put out there. He is a real threat to steal a base. Ooh, Adam Lanham. Yeah, jumped a little bit. See what kind of read he has on that pickoff from Trevor Delay. That was one thing, though, Mike Keene said about McIntyre. He's not just an athlete. He's not just a good runner. They realized pretty early on. He's good at reading a pitcher. There's more to base stealing than just being fast. We've all seen plenty of guys in the big leagues over the years that had great speed that weren't necessarily elite base stealers. So there's more to it than, than just speed and athleticism. And they think Dominic McIntyre is the complete package as far as that's concerned. So he's on it first, one away. Thrasher awaits the 1-1 one -one pitch. But that paints the corner, and he's down in the count one and two. I don't think Scott Jackson says about Trevor Delay. Just it, you can tell, just his heart rate does not get elevated yeah. in pressure situations. Let's the game come to him. Throws over again. Thrasher, the leading hitter on the season, coming in for North Alabama. He was a guy though that really didn't get to play much in the fall. Mike Keene saying he was in and out of quarantine so much for various reasons. He didn't get a great look at him. But he's taking advantage of his opportunities so far this season. Skies that one into shallow left. Cam Locklear calls for it. And he'll lock it up for the second out. So two away now for the three-hole hitter, Devin Daniel. He was one of our players to watch coming into the ball game. He is the only North Alabama player this season with more than one multi-hit game. That just speaks to the struggles they have had swinging the bat. That one dips just below the zone. Daniel today 0 for 2 has flown out to center field and right field. You've heard both coaches talk about some slow starts for some veteran guys. Yeah. Uh, both of them mentioned this week 
a few players that, you know, just we thought we were going to get some better starts out of these guys, just haven't right now. Good runner, first base, good gap here. Hitters count here for Daniel. Got that one down around the end of the bat. Pops it up. Locklear will handle it. So a base. And to take us the rest of the way with the play-by-play -play duties, Alan York. All right, thank you, partner. Game recap presented by Carter Bank and Trust. Trevor DeLate out the seventh. First pitch swinging to Cam Locklear as Harris came. One pitch, one out. For those of you that might have walked away to get a ice cold soda pop, it's been the microcosm of the outing for Trevor DeLay. You know, I almost wonder if North Alabama, may you just take a pitch or two just to see what happens, you know? I mean, it's 56 pitches is all that Trevor DeLay has thrown in this ballgame. We're in the seventh inning. <laughs> Make him work. He might get to start tomorrow at this rate. <laughs> He's going to have to go down to the bullpen and throw a few more pitches after the game. He hasn't even broken a sweat. Ben Kiefer at the plate. Takes one at the knees, and if you do take, that's what happens. Keepers over two. Two ground outs, one that ricocheted off of Delate's mitt back in the fifth. Delate his last start to juxtapose tonight 85 pitches in five innings of work in the win at Central Florida. He's 58. Now in six and a third. The keeper got a piece of it and stayed alive. So there, there's a, a term, they call it a Maddox. Have you heard of this? Basically, a complete game shutout of fewer than 100 pitches because Greg Maddox did that a number of times in his career, 13 times, as a matter of fact. That's what they call that. Trevor DeLay is well on his way. Strikeout of Kiefer. He is commanding the zone. I see that graphic for Greg Maddox. Every I've saw I've seen it more recently over the last four or five months. Of it was something about of the strikeouts he's had, how many swing and misses or something just ridiculous for Greg Maddox and as much as things change they stay the same for Trevor DeLay cruises through the seventh stretch time in Lynchburg three nothing Liberty as the Flames in North Alabama open up a sun play with a three game series and a one hit shutout a gym for Trevor DeLay lefty on the mound for Liberty First pitch at the knees for Drew Hudson, taken for a strike, 0 1. Boy, great bats does a great job framing some of those pitches low in the zone. He has bought Trevor Delayed a couple of calls, not that Delayed has really needed it today. Perfect segue, Matt, into great bats. The Flames catcher has utmost trust from the coaches to call yeah. his own game, which is so rare in college baseball. And Scott Jackson went in depth with you a couple of days ago about great bets and how much trust they have in him and the pitchers do as well. And having to fight as a coach. Okay, we're going to win because of my decisions. Right. And giving that trust to his players. One hopper, deep and short. Locklear throw in time, one away. Yeah, I think that's just as impressive almost as the maturity of a great best to call the game is Matt Williams, Flames pitching coach, the lack of ego to say, I'm going to hand this off to you and let you make these decisions. Because you know, that's hard. As a coach, you want to be the one making the calls. You want to be in control. You want to say, you know what? I'm going to trust you to learn and grow and, and kind of figure it out. And, and he's letting them do that. One away for Kevin Brennan. He's 0 for 1. As a sack bunt and a ground out. Yeah, we were talking about Greg Maddox a couple of moments ago. And 
not referencing Trevor Delate to Greg Maddox, but you could take this game for yeah, Delate. This game is Maddox like. It is. And Greg Maddox faced 20,421 batters in his career. Only 310 of those 20,000 plus saw a 3 0 count. That's crazy. And 177 of those 310 were intentional walks. That is unbelievable. <laughs> Very similar numbers to Trevor DeLate today. Seven and a third innings. Two strikeouts, two walks. Make it three strikeouts as he punches out Brennan. And the Flames got a generous call there, just like Austin Emmeter did to end the last half frame for Liberty. That was at the belt, so yeah. by definition, that was a strike. Although Logan Matthew might argue the pitch he struck out on was a little bit outside. Two outs for Levi J Jensen. Lions catcher is over two. When you see great bets stick that leg out there straight like that, who does that remind you of? To me, Tony Payne. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Good. On the same page okay. there. Yeah, he's the first guy I remember doing it. Kind of gives you that ability. And you see some other guys in the big leagues do it now. And typically it's just so you can get that target as low as possible. Tap or foul. I've seen it occasionally last few years. But yeah, definitely Tony Pena. The one two. Obviously, that's something you only do with nobody on base. Yep. Tony Pena played for a number of teams. I remember him doing it with Pittsburgh back in the early 80s. Strikeout for Jansen. We played seven and a half. Trevor DeLate rolling today for Liberty. Top of the ninth we go. Trevor DeLate's been the story. Eight innings, four strikeouts. He's let his defense work for him. Pitch count at 80 as we go to the top of the ninth with Matt Warner. I'm Alan York. Opener of this three-game series with North Alabama and Liberty. A Sun play opening up today. Top of the lineup for North Alabama. Dominic McIntyre, Austin Thrasher, and Devin Daniel. We've got our research staff trying to figure out last time Liberty had a complete game shutout. I've not checked Twitter yet to see if we have a beat writer in the press box. I'll tell you, if you're counting on me, I'm probably going to let you down. There's that line of the rock. Diving play by Jake Wilson. Put a star by that one here in the top of the ninth. You know, when a pitcher keeps his defense involved the way that Delate has, it's funny how you end up seeing some really good defensive plays behind you. And there have been a few of those today for Liberty. Defensively, the Flames are the same as they have been. Sometimes you have some late inning defensive replacements, but Drew Bachman's the only player that was inserted into the lineup. He pinch hit last inning, got a single. So defensively, the Flames are the same across the board as Austin Thrasher. 0, and 0 for 3 today. Popped out his last time up. Same two teams tomorrow, 2 o'clock first pitch. Trey Gibson slated to go for Liberty. While wow. Chase Best Scheduled a toss for North Alabama. Two outs in the ninth after Austin Thrasher. Swing and a miss. 
fifth strikeout for Trevor DeLate. Tag applied by Betts. David Daniels 0 for 3. Trevor DeLate, a one hitter right now. And that came back in the third. We've seen some great pitching performances by Flames over the years. This might be the best. Yeah, this is not. right up there. Lift it out to right. And the gem is complete. Wow. Trevor DeLate. Complete game shutout, one hitter. As Liberty wins it four to nothing over North Alabama. Four runs, 12 hits, an error for Liberty, 10 left on, no runs, one hit, one error, three left on for North Alabama. Trevor DeLay deserves a smile after that performance here today, Matt. That's the kind of pitching we're gonna get in this series, really from both sides. It's gonna be a fun weekend of baseball. So for Matt Warren, I'm Alan York, saying so long from Lynchburg, Virginia. The final score, Liberty 4, North Alabama nothing. All games airing on the ESPN Networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.